The facility throbbed with the sterile hum of scientific ambition turned monstrous. Here, amidst gleaming chrome and the relentless pulse of unnatural technology, destinies had been warped, and humanity sacrificed on the altar of victory. To the Galactic Federation, it was progress. To Lieutenant Colonel Eric Lawson and his Phoenix Squad, it was a reminder of their damnation. Their infiltration into the facility was a symphony of chaos, with explosions ripping through pristine hallways and alarms screaming in disarray. It was never about stealth, but a deafening declaration that the monsters bred within these walls weren't the Federation's obedient weapons. The enemies they encountered were absolute fanatics, full of manic glee and horrifying efficiency. Each fight became a twisted echo in the blood-slit corridors. But with every encounter, Phoenix squads slowly realized that their enemies were not the undead. They were just pawns sent to delay their infiltration. Eric fought with a chilling focus, each enemy a cathartic strike against his own agonizing existence. Yet, every mindless fanatic they dispatched seemed to be replaced by two more, their maddened cries bouncing off the walls. The facility was a monstrous hive. They were merely wasps who had dared to sting and were now paying the price. Sarah fought by his side, a whirlwind of precision violence. Their years of forced deaths and warped survival created a grim rhythm between them. Not the camaraderie of true soldiers, but an unspoken pact forged in the twisted crucible of the Lazarus Resurrection Project. Yet even in her hardened eyes, he saw a gnawing fear mirroring his own. Were they truly winning, or were they spiraling downward? Each killing seemed to be a monstrous reflection of their broken selves. The data core, their primary objective, loomed ahead. Steel reinforced, it pulsed with the promise of secrets, a final defiant act against the architects of their suffering. It was fitting, Eric thought darkly, that their final fight, their desperate act of rebellion, would pit them against the culmination of everything that had shattered their minds and souls. A final push. Bodies, both theirs and the enemies, became mangled obstacles as they carved a bloody path toward the data core. Eric moved in a blur honed by endless resurrected battles, a nightmare made brutally real. Yet every pull of the trigger, every melee strike, every echoing scream chipped away another fragment of his already shattered humanity. Was there even anything left of the man who'd volunteered for this cruel experiment all those years ago? Perhaps they were all just ghosts now, trapped in a grotesque theater of perpetual violence. The steel door to the data core hissed open, admitting them to a space of stark silence after the roar of battle. Consoles flickered ominously, the cold light illuminating rows upon rows of stasis pods. Each glassy tube held the promise of another twisted miracle or a greater horror than anything they'd yet encountered. Sarah and the rest of the squad tensed beside him, the first actual vulnerability Eric had seen in her in years. What is this place? Sergeant Reeves breathed, the tremor in his voice cutting through his grim resolve. Before anyone could answer, the silence shattered. A figure emerged from the shadows, not in gleaming phoenix armor, but in the sterile white of a medical coat. Vicar, his eyes, usually burning with scientific zeal, held an emptiness that sent a chill down Eric's spine. Eric, Vicar's voice echoed in the sterile chamber. I knew you would make it this far. There's so much to show you. A wave of revulsion crashed over Eric. It wasn't fear or anger, but the crushing certainty that this nightmare had further depths, an abyss they'd never fully grasped. The pods behind Vicar pulsed with unnatural light, and Eric realized with sickening horror what they held. Inside the pods were not soldiers, but mangled forms warped beyond recognition in a grotesque mockery of the Lazarus Project. This, Vicar said, his voice rising with a fanatic's fervor, is transcendence, iteration, the death of death itself, not as a side effect, but the goal. A twisted smile contorted his features. You humans are the key to transcendence. And here, here I will achieve true perfection. Eric glanced over at the data core, and Vicar took immediate notice, a wicked smile crossing his face. I am now giving you a choice, old friend, Vicar said mockingly. 
Walk away and save the galaxy, Vicar looked back at the data core, or end Project Phoenix once and for all. Fury surged through Eric, a raw primal force against the perversion of everything he'd endured. His Phoenix squad rallied around him, a final defiant stand against the architects of their destruction. The battle that followed was like nothing they'd ever faced. The things from the pods were relentless, unburdened by pain, driven by a singular monstrous hunger. It was a descent into a hell that made their previous fight seem almost civilized in comparison. Each blow Eric landed felt like a hammer against his monstrous reflection. These creatures were what he would become, could become, if the stabilizer ever failed, if there was nothing left to hold back the encroaching darkness. They were the future the Federation craved, immortal abominations to be unleashed on their enemies. The fight eventually had Phoenix Squad being pushed back outside the Data Core room. These brutes proved to be too strong. The battle wreaked absolute havoc upon the facility, threatening to bring it crashing down upon them all. Eventually, Sarah fell in battle, her scream swallowed by the unnatural roar of the things from the pods. Her death wasn't the clean, clinical affair it had once been. All of this wasn't war. This was a sickening travesty, a perversion of every ethical line the Federation pretended to uphold. Eric found himself alone, as he was the only member who hadn't been forced back out of the room. Was this a tactic that Vicar enacted to separate Eric from his squad, he thought? What was left of his squad lay broken somewhere in the facility, in the midst of slow resurrection due to the extensive damage they had taken. They were in no shape to help him now. He was surrounded, not by enemies, but by grotesque echoes of his own possible fate. Yet a cold clarity descended upon him in the face of this terror. He was the prototype, the first of many horrors Vicar envisioned. And if he were the first, he would ensure he was the last. The data core thrummed with dormant power. With a ragged cry, he lunged for the gleaming consoles at blinding speed, his battered body moving on sheer, desperate instinct. Vicar shouted a garbled taunt, drowned out by Eric's raw determination. His fingers found the release, an overload sequence meant for catastrophic emergencies, a final act of defiance against the monsters he had helped usher into existence. The lights flickered, the pulse of the pod stuttering. An alarm began to wail, a mournful cry mirrored by the shriek of the abominations around him. They descended upon him, not as soldiers seeking victory, but as ravenous beasts sensing the imminent end of their unnatural existence. Even as they tore at him, Eric fought because that was what the Federation had made him into. He was an unyielding weapon, even in his final moments. The data core hummed, building towards critical overload. The light grew blindingly bright, casting grotesque, elongated shadows of his struggle, a macabre dance of defiance imprinted on the facility walls. Then the explosion. Not fire and chaos, but a burst of energy that seemed to tear the air apart. The pods shattered, the creatures disintegrating in bursts of unnatural light. Vicar laughed, a sound cut short as the force of the blast consumed him. The facility, the cradle of their monstrous existence, collapsed inward on itself, leaving a gaping hole in a wasteland, a testament to the horror's ambition wrought when left unchecked. Darkness engulfed Eric, and for the first time since that first death in the Federation medical facility, it felt like a mercy. Long moments passed as the wreckage smoldered, a testament to a victory no one would celebrate. Yet, amidst the ruins, there was movement. A flicker, a broken gasp, a hand clawing free from the debris. Sarah, badly mangled but alive. Or perhaps more accurately, in the process of being reborn. The legacy of the Lazarus Resurrection Project endured, but its true impact was uncertain at the moment. It was a monstrous gift in a poison chalice left behind by the ashes of Eric's final rebellion. Months dragged by amidst the sterile confines of a top-secret medical facility. Phoenix Squad's wounds, a testament to the blast's effect, vanished with unsettling efficiency, leaving only mental scars as potent reminders of the unnatural resilience coursing through their veins. Something was different after that cataclysmic resurrection. 
Phoenix Squad's bodies were no longer just whole, they were perfected. Gone were the vestiges of decay, the lingering signs of their monstrous transformations. They looked human again, save for the unnervingly pale skin and eerie yellow eyes. Sarah, especially, could have passed for a woman in her prime, a chilling irony given her monstrous existence. And yet, she recoiled from the cloying scent of disinfectant, a human revulsion clinging to her flickering humanity. Perhaps that was the only part of her left. Her laughter, once a manic battle cry, now held a brittle edge. Each manufactured chuckle grated like broken glass. Medical personnel flitted around them, carrying a grim unease instead of Vicar's fanatical zeal. Project Phoenix's triumphant energy had curdled into fear, and Sarah realized with cold certainty that the Federation now feared its own creation. Rumors drifted in like smoke through cracked windows. The rogue facility's destruction was labeled an accident, a convenient lie to mask the terrible truth. Vicar, officially dead, was whispered about as a madman whose ambition had unleashed a horror that even the most hardened leaders couldn't fully comprehend. The Lazarus Resurrection Project itself was under intense scrutiny. Its expansion was halted indefinitely due to the fact that crucial research and data had been purged from all data centers and backups, likely the result of Vicar and any rogue agents who had been working for him. There was a hushed talk of containment, of dismantling, a desperate attempt to bury the atrocities brought to light by Vicar's betrayal. Sarah and the surviving Phoenix Squad members were no longer tools for war, but living proof of the Federation's horrific transgression. They existed as an anomaly, a stain on a polished facade. Even their newfound unease, their creeping doubts, were likely just a symptom of the latest incoming reports. The ongoing rumors and gossip sent a tremor of dread through Sarah's battle-hardened heart. One moonless night, a new figure entered their orbit. Not a scientist or diplomatic leader, but a legendary war veteran whose eyes held the echoes of too many battles and too many compromised choices. Colonel Petrova, Sarah breathed, her voice rusty from disuse. The woman who had once raised concerns over the early ongoings of the Lazarus Resurrection Project now stood before them, not as their savior, but as the bearer of a grim possibility. Sergeant Major, Petrova's voice was quiet, devoid of her usual authority. The Federation, it needs a scapegoat, someone to focus the blame on, to appease public outrage once the truth inevitably surfaces. Her eyes hardened. They want Vicar blamed, but to paint him as a sole madman, they need evidence, a trail of unsanctioned experiments. Although the rogue facility was obliterated, a trail remains to follow. Sarah understood. Somewhere out in the cosmos, there was evidence. Here, take this. Colonel Petrova handed Sarah a data pad. These are your new orders. A sly smile crossed Anya Petrova's lips, along with your battlefield promotion from the higher-ups. Congratulations, Captain Sarah Thorne. Phoenix Squad left in the dead of night, not as heroes or villains, but as something in between. Survivors of a monstrous experiment stepping into the shadows to help dismantle the architect of their suffering. Somehow, as a result of the blast, they were weapons remade, super soldiers in Petrova's grim assessment. Aboard the shuttle hurtling towards a hidden location, Captain Sarah Thorne, granddaughter of the legendary hero, poured over the data pad Petrova had handed her, her mind swirling. Newly promoted First Sergeant David Abara's voice cut through the shuttle's roar. Captain Thorne, he called out over the noise, a hint of awe lingering in his voice after their unexpected battlefield promotions. Your communicator's buzzing like crazy. Didn't you hear it? Sarah blinked, startled out of her grim analysis as she activated her headset. I had my comms muted briefly, she admitted. I wanted to focus on this report. Thanks for the heads up. David nodded, leaning back with a touch of curiosity. Sarah spoke into her comms headset. Atlas, what's the message? The AI's smooth voice held a tremor of disbelief. Captain, incoming message. Encrypted. It's not from the Federation. It's from Lieutenant Colonel Eric Lawson. Sarah gasped, a cold shock jolting through her. Play it now. Stand by, ma'am. Decrypting. As the message began, Sarah felt the world tilt. 
Eric's haunted voice cut through her headgear comms with shocking revelations. First Sergeant Abara glanced at her, his own expression shifting to match the horror dawning on Sarah's face. Captain, are you all right? Sarah's eyes met David's with a look of absolute shock. David. Sarah's voice was barely a whisper. Eric's alive. David leaned forward abruptly at the words. He says, Sarah broke off as she swallowed hard. He says that Vicar lives, that he's played us for fools the entire time, and that it's far worse than the Federation knows. The message ended in Sarah's ears. David's stunned silence was its own confirmation. All Sarah could do was transmit the message to David's comm unit, her hands shaking as other nearby members of Phoenix Squad began taking notice. After a long, uncomfortable moment, David's slow words cut through Sarah's headset comms. Who are the Lich? he murmured, his mouth trembling. And why are they a threat to the galaxy?